we are inviting you to travel with us to one of Bahamas' remote and very beautiful islands called Cat Island. If you think that the real Bahamas looks like a bunch of luxury hotels, restaurants, casinos, and beaches full of people, you might be wrong. All of this you can definitely find on the main island, Nassau, where we are going to start our journey. In reality, the real Bahamas is an archipelago with 700 islands, both large and small, with only 30 of them being actually inhabited by people. To get to one of them, we have to take a local air flight on a small plane. And we booked Bahamas Western Air to get to Cat Island. Nassau's airport is very well designed. It's international and local flights, located in one terminal, and is really convenient. We have to wait a few hours before we catch our flight to Cat Island. Flight delays are very common for local flights, so don't be surprised. There's another terminal for U.S. flights only. A majority of the visitors and tourists coming from Bahamas from the U.S. And it is very convenient because they can clear American customs and fly anywhere in the States. Nassau's airport is very clean and organized with large baggage simple enough to move around. One thing we are unhappy with is that there aren't many choices of food. Everything was very expensive. Well, as well as any other airport. But besides coffee, drinks, and snacks, there's not much that you can buy. We have our own homemade snacks and sandwiches. It was a very smart idea and we were very well prepared. After flight registration and a few hours of waiting, we were finally called to board. We are flying today on a 32-year-old small Saab plane. Today's flight was not completely booked, so there weren't many people, and the boarding went by pretty fast. Weather was also very perfect, so we got lucky. The view from the plane windows when the plane was taking off was magnificent. Turquoise water, sandy beaches, it was absolutely amazing. The flight by itself was a very interesting and very entertaining experience. Very close to Nassau is another beautiful island, Eleuthera. It took approximately 35 minutes to get to Cat Island and we were finally here. Cat Island's airport doesn't look much like an airport at all. It's just a runway with a small shack with a few people working there. When we got back, we need to get our luggage and then we found a person outside waiting in the parking with our rental car. We wisely pre-booked online before the trip. Here it is, an old Japanese-made Honda CRV with the right steering wheel. Here in Bahamas, the cars drive on the left side. Now we are eager to get to the cottage because we are tired and we are hungry. There's only one main road so we don't even need a GPS to get here. It's just about an hour drive. Our cottage, we booked online for $160 five months ago. And it is very clean and it's very cozy with two bedrooms, a living room, and a very, very well equipped kitchen. If you'd like to cut your own food like we do. There are also local restaurants if you like to go out. The owner was thoughtful and took care of everything. There's even a bread maker with flour and yeast, just in case we want to make our own bread. Beer in the fridge, some food supplies like pasta and sauce, and all spices. We have everything for dinner now, and we're going to the supermarket tomorrow. The island does not have centralized water systems, so every house automatically collects rainwater from their roof into a large container outside. The water coming to the house is run through a filter and then it becomes drinkable. The water passes through a water heater into the shower and into the laundry room. The drinking water is safe, so we don't need to buy bottled water like in some other places. All the waste from the house is disposed into a septic tank in the ground outside. 
Electricity is centralized and available to everyone on the island. Of course, it's not cheap. So we were advised to not be wasteful and to turn off our air conditioners and anything we weren't using in the house. The house has three air conditioners, one in each room, so we don't need to run all of them at the same time. The first thing we always do upon coming is checking out the beach. We left in the morning and we travel the whole day, so we have time to enjoy the warm seawater. It is only 500 steps to the beach, which is about three minutes, and then we are there. There is another cottage right on the beach, and it was listed for about $325 per day, which is twice as much as we paid, just because it is right on the beach. I think it's stupid to pay twice as much for a place just a few meters closer to the water. Don't you agree? The beach is exactly what it's like on pictures. Soft, warm, beautiful, crystal clear water. We feel like we're on a private beach all the time. We rarely see any of our neighbors or any other people. There's so much stuff we can do here. It's so much fun. Swimming, fishing, snorkeling. In our possession, we have two two-person kayaks and it's really cool. If we get bored, we can explore all the surrounding beaches. The weather almost every day is really calm, at least now in July. There are no waves, no wind. It is just a pleasure kayaking. All the beaches are different and beautiful in their own way, as well as each sunset we experienced every day. They were unique and absolutely unforgettable. We found a few juvenile pink conch at the beach. It is now a very rare occurrence. Look at this beautiful shell and how they're fighting for their life. They have become endangered due to overfishing, especially for their delicious meat. We have a video on our channel about them, so please go take a look. Pink conch's mother shell is probably the rarest, especially for its pink pearl, which is developing in one of 1,000 shells and is more expensive than diamonds. I also found a fireworm. I do not recommend you touch it with your bare hands, even if it does look fluffy and harmless under the water. That worm spikes a neurotoxin that can cause numbness, pain, headache, dizziness that can last anywhere from a few hours to a few days. This worm feeds on sea urchins and it actually breeds pretty quickly. Marine biologists believe that it's happening because of global warming. I also think another very important factor is the imbalance in the food chain due to overfishing that could be causing this. We found the snorkeling amazingly interesting. Around Cat Island, there are coral reefs almost everywhere, big and small, and they are practically untouched and safe from human activities. We love fishing, and we have our fishing rods and casting nets with us and on us at all time. It is so great to have fresh catch for dinner on the grill. We found this needlefish being cleaned by a small coral fish. Needlefish, when they reach about medium size, they are really delicious and have this soft white flesh and these very beautiful and interesting blue bones. The first time in my life I caught here, just from the beach, without even having to go out to sea, a clean trigger fish. It is a highly priced fish, even amongst local fishermen, for their very tasty flesh. This fish feeds on crabs, and that is why it tastes much like crab meat. We, of course, decided to let it go. The queen fish is very colorful and is really cute. The conservation status of this fish is not under concern. And you don't actually have to have a fishing license on the Bahamas. And this is a squirrel fish, very common amongst reef fish for the Caribbean islands. We never ate this fish, so we cannot comment on the food quality, but we are going to let it go. One of the best fun we actually had on our empty beach was cracking a coconut open. It is actually not so easy, because first of all, you need to pick a good coconut that is full of juice. 
it is really important because we need to clean the coconut shell from the husk and that is pretty difficult and we don't want to waste our time. Also, we learn from local people that the really delicious coconut is actually sprouted coconut. Fresh coconut water and coconut flesh can give you energy on a hot day. To crack open a coconut, we just need a good knife, a plastic bag, a heavy stone. We do have a YouTube video on this and it gives you pretty good recommendations, so please go take a look. If you want to buy real islands fruits and vegetables, there is one island local farm just across the street from our house. This farmer grows a lot of tropical fruits, oranges, mangoes, herbs, tomatoes, and more. We didn't have a lot of luck because lots of fruits and vegetables weren't ready to harvest yet, so we bought only bananas and watermelon. I should say, we never tried a more delicious watermelon and more delicious bananas like here on the island. It is actually so interesting how the locals grow bananas. They grow them in holes. Probably holes create some sort of microclimate suitable for bananas close to their natural rainforest habitat. We will go explore the island tomorrow and we will continue to show you more about this amazing place in our next video. Thank you so much for watching.